Welcome to JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya of JSA here at ITW 2019 in Atlanta with my good friend, Mr. Mark Diamond. He's the Executive Vice President and Chief Revenue Officer of Fiberlight. Mark, welcome yeah. to JSA TV. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you, a known thought leader in our space. We're excited about uh, this conversation today. And for our viewers, let's just back up, make sure they know. Tell us a little bit about how Fiberlight ignites digital transformation. Yeah, you know, I, I think it starts with kind of thinking about digital transformation, right? As, as things move away from kind of traditional locations, that requires a different network architecture. So we think about it in three different ways. One is, do you have the density in the ground, right? Do you have the fiber counts and strands? So whether you're building a live net, uh, a, lit, a lit fiber network or you're doing a, or a dark network, do you have that? And just there's not a lot of networks that have that density. Secondly, I think about from a diversity standpoint. So gone are the days of just having a one secondary route. We're now running into opportunities where it's two, three, or four different diverse routes. And being able to have those already in our inventory or being able to construct them is, is key to that digital transformation. Because, again, with the stuff living in different locations now, you've got to, the network becomes all that more important. And then the last piece, I think, is just the depth and uh, piece of it, meaning all our networks, for the most part, are constructed underground. So from a security standpoint, from a standpoint of just reliability and not being susceptible to typical aerial networks, I think is how we think about and how we're able to ignite having those key components for digital transformation. I love that. So we're talking capacity, we're talking reliability and redundancy, and we're talking depth. Yep. Uh, and security, so I, I love those. What type of businesses or verticals are you guys uh, uh, best fit for? Yeah, uh, the hyperscalers are, are big clients of ours, so that's a, a key growing expansion area. Uh, we've also been very involved in the wireless side, not only the traditional uh, four big MNOs, but also we think a little bit about the in-building guys and what's going on there on the small cell side, as well as because we have rural fiber in a lot of areas, we've done a great bit of work with the uh, wireless ISPs, so they're um, great traction with those guys and that's kind of emerging as well. And then uh, any typical infrastructure uh, network operator, those are just no-brainers for us. And then coming behind that with an enterprise play is that enterprise kind of customer changes what their makeup and traditional lit services is not good enough. We're finding good traction with those large uh, enterprise clients. Right, right. And of course here today at ITW, our telecom marketplace on full display. Uh, what's our message here for, for telecom network operators? Yeah, f four different ones. One, um, as we move away from just being a pure fiber infrastructure player, we've moved into the uh, service provider space. So data center interconnect is a big play for us. So we have over 120 data centers in our markets. We're now offering a standardized pricing and package for low uh, latency direct routes in and out of all the data centers at 100G. Um, so excited about that. Very well received already. Um, on our continuing kind of the dark fiber side, there's an element of transaction transactionalizing uh, that business. So we did a significant overbuild in Data Center Alley up in Ashburn. Uh, we just completed that. We've now populated one of our own conduits with a 1,728 count fiber, and we're now actually offering standardized pricing. So businesses and whether it's enterprise, hyperscalers, whoever want to go really fast, they can just buy that and, and go quickly. Um, and then over the past year, we've been marketing a near net program to 78,000 buildings that are close to our network with preset pricing. Um, that's again starting to get some traction with the operators. And last is just our ability to construct and do that custom work we've always done that still seems to be a, our bread and butter and we we embrace that in our construction DNA so that's that's been great amazing amazing so stepping back let's talk data center solutions because I know a lot of my data center friends out there are going to be very interested about this tell us a little bit more particularly in that Dallas Fort Worth area which is popping right now yeah. Yeah, it's one of our densest markets. I mean, I, I just think about that whole area is back to the what I was saying at the beginning, right? We have that density. So I think about it from a life cycle standpoint. So if you're if you're a customer and you're in that 10G and you're buying a lot of 10Gs, you can optimize by coming to 100G. If you're if you're a 100G consumer and you're starting to outgrow that, then you can come look at pairs of dark fiber. So we catch them at that point in the life cycle. And then for the very large customers that say, hey, I've been buying dark fiber, but now I need to have my own conduit that you guys build for us in a very custom manner, we can also address that. So a very customized kind of different life cycle approaches to catch them, but um, exciting that we can participate in that high bandwidth arena. It's like scalability on demand here. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so how does your recent partnership with Blue Planet further drive this quality of service you offer to your customers? 
Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's, um, it's that quality of service. So there's probably three different areas. The first is, um, I think about it from a, um, you know, you, uh, from a provisioning standpoint, right? There's this uh, service will allow us to um, take the human error element out about it. So when you go to provision stuff, there's always the risk of human error. So th this system will have our data and be able to kind of orchestrate circuits and kind of think ahead and understand our inventory. That's one. Um, and then two, just taking that um, information that we already have on hand in 3GIS and our outside plan information and now having the ability for our employees to click a button and see that whole kind of circuit from what's the cross connect what's the what are the laterals from the building what's that long haul or metro component and then what's the other side of it so that we can easily identify the trouble spots and reduced MTTR from a knock management standpoint so that's really Im impactful from that standpoint and then the last piece I think is just when you think about doing network maintenance outages and being scheduled and this um, platform has the ability to kind of learn from previous events, and so now we can be more predictive about kind of anticipating potential network troubles. So those three areas are, it's really huge, and it's really gonna allow us to leapfrog into the future uh, right. from that standpoint, yeah. yeah. Amazing, visibility and proactive management, which is key. Yep. Key for keeping us all up and running as we take on new digital transformation solutions. So exciting times, where can our viewers go to learn more? Fiberlight.com, great resources, a lot of different tools out there. All our network maps are public. You can find out about us and our solutions. And so, again, appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. Fiberlight.com. Right there. Go ahead and click on it, guys. Obviously, a company to watch. Mark, you always teach me. Uh, thank you so much for all your insight. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV here at ITW. Happy networking.